November 17, 2013. We're looking at a new image of ice sun, and I've backed down the temperatures to try to knock out some of that glare. Everyone's trying to see what's inside it. And uh, they're concerned, if you saw the video last night, uh, about fragmentation. Said it may be a couple of days before we know because it would take time for these objects inside to drift slowly apart. That's what they're saying. Again, I, I think they've been there the entire time, but because of this increased speed and the solar wind pressure and the electrical energy being exchanged, they may start. And I think one did a few nights ago on the video that I saw. I think one slowly was left behind, but we've seen uh, some of these comets break up into uh, 77 pieces, 78 pieces on some of them. But anyway, they uh, are watching it. Now, this is stereo ahead, CRO2. That means I sun's coming in from the left. And that's where our solar flare is today. Now, it's not a strong flare, but the CME that you're seeing associated with it was very strong. Now, this, we're turning Earth facing here. I sense coming in from the right, just like that. Notice the two stationary objects are still in this camera on the left that we saw yesterday. I'm not sure what that is. They're not lens flares. But again, our, the activity of the sun is picked up. Now, every time you see one of the large bursts from the bottom, it almost seems like the opposite side has some type of reaction. But here, if you notice today's date, I'll just kind of stop it at the different events. There. To the right on this image is ISON, the approach of ISON. We're again Earth facing from SDO. The sunspot in the center of the sun facing us in the bottom has continued to grow since yesterday. Now, it's no, no longer rated as beta gamma delta. It's just a double configuration, but we've seen that change within hours. Again, this is an Earth-facing image, just a different camera. I think we have 12 cameras on the SDO, and they can you can get those plus a combination of overlays, and it just lets you see different details if you go to the SDO site. All of those solar links are on my website, bpearthwatch.com, guys. If they're not on the video that we're talking about, just go over there and check it out, your Quake links and all. But look at this. Look at this light get brighter inside of this crater, of this large sunspot as it comes around. Kind of got the lights on us. You can also see the smaller sunspots. Let's look, take a close-up of this. This one's turning Earth-facing. It's the largest on the solar disk. Now, in the video last night, I showed the 6.8 quake near the Antarctic. We've had a 7.8 since then. It's a good bit stronger. When you go one, one magnitude up, guys, you're talking about a tremendous increase in strength. But look at the shell on this last one. It's nearly the size of the globe in this pattern. When you have a quake that size, it reverberates into the atmosphere and through the earth. If you look at your corn bayou quake monitors, you can see these quakes there. Now, pull this up. These are just the two big ones. And if you look at what you would want to do in the green box where it says magnitude, is back that down. I've, you notice I've got it up at the six level. If you come down into the five, you'll start seeing your aftershocks. Let's do that. Now, the other side that's getting the pressure, you notice, is Japan, right offshore of Fukushima, right where it doesn't need to be. But let me pull this up, and we'll try to, you possibly can count the aftershocks in that area. Look at the inner shells there. A lot of pressure buildup. This part of the earth is almost like a fuse, almost like a breaking point to keep larger plates from snapping it's kind of and it is where two large plates come together guys what they call it is the scotia plate and some people that have researched this area and i'll show you a better image of it have said it's the area of a comet strike that hit and came in from the left hit and pushed up a mound to the right and we do have a series of islands there and i want to show you some interesting things about this area this is called Orcata Station. 
It's been there since 1904. It's the oldest one in the white continent. Now, you see this mound? This is a series of islands. But they some are speculating and saying that this was caused by a comet impact, guys, and it looks just like one to me. We've seen them all around the globe. In Sandwich Islands, here's Candlemas and Vindication Island. Now, they look like tiny dots, but they're actually large islands. Probably still magna there. You can see the top of them. And as you back this out, just years and years of ice flows out over that shelf from when it heats up and melts. Looks like that fan pattern, and you can see that ocean is ice. It's very cold there. But this is just a tiny dot on the edge of a possible comet impact. And they said it came in and it slid from the left to the right and stopped there. They were talking about... This may have caused this fault, and it's called the Scotia Fault Zone, guys, because it's where two plates converge. And now because it's a weak point, that's where it lets off the pressure that we see building on the earth now. That's why these big quakes are there. Heads up. Be safe.